Hey there, comic book fans. Got a rare back issue haul for you for me today. Just got back from getting my first COVID vaccine, and I feel fine so far. And there were some comics delivered after I got back, so I figured I'd show them to you. Like I said, I usually don't buy back issues just because I buy all the new stuff I usually get, so I don't need back issues. But I made a... Um, Made an order at Lone Star Comics, mycomicshop.com, just to just to fill in a few things. Like uh, here's the first one, Rex Mundy number three. And I have this. Uh, just last year, I reread all my Rex Mundy series, and this was missing. Where is it? I don't know. I think it's it might just be misfiled. But once something gets misfiled. Who knows where it is? I, I can only find things by chance. If it's misfiled, I can only find it by chance. Like, my first issue of Usagi Ojimbo is missing. Not Albedo number whatever it is, but Usagi Ojimbo number one. Well, all my, all my Usagis are up there. First issue is gone. Don't know what happened to it. It's just not there. So, and Rex Mundy number three just wasn't there. I, I'm reading it. I get to two. Like this is volume two, I think it is, or is it volume three? No, volume two. It's Dark Horse. So it was, you know, twenty five issues in, and all of a sudden I went, w "Where's three? So I figured I'd get a number three, just for the heck of it. And then the other thing I got, and I have one more of these coming from eBay, uh, is Uber. What is this? Twenty five and twenty six. Uh, I started getting Uber with the second series, um, Uber Invasion. And I had read the first series digitally, but then wanted to get the issues. And, uh, and I found, like, a lot of 1 through 24 for cheap. So I got those, but it goes up to... Uh, but I didn't have 25, 26, and 27, I think it goes up to. So... And they didn't have 27 here. So I ended up ordering it from eBay. Except, like, you know, these were, like, $2 a piece. I think I ended up paying $8 for it on eBay, issue 27, just because it was, like, $4 for the comic and $4 for shipping. So that's the problem with getting one comic from someone on eBay. But it was the last one I needed for the original um, Uber series. So I figured, what the heck? And Uber has like a million, di well, not a million. I think they have five different covers each issue, and they have different names too. Like this is um, Blitzkrieg cover, very fine. And this, I guess, this is just the regular cover. Yeah, regular. It says regular cover right there. Does it say Blitz? Yeah, it says Blitzkrieg cover edition. There's like a propaganda edition, Blitzkrieg edition, regular edition, maybe two more editions too. But uh, I really enjoy Uber, so I wanted the original comics. Now with that last one, I will have all of them. Uh, then here, here's a strange one. This is Marvel Comics Presents number 174. I had forgotten about this, but I looked... I put it on my want list on... Um, mycomicshop.com like two years ago and a matter of fact, that's that's kind of what sparked this whole thing me getting some back issues was they sent me an email that said oh this is from your want list is in and i'm like that's not my want list why is a mar why is a copy of marvel comics presents on my want list and then i remembered it's on my want list because if you go to jaredosborne.com you'll see a link for um one of my uh, PDF books I made called Double Secret Probation. It's a photo portraits of everybody in the Marvel bullpen from December 1994. But this is one of the pictures that's in it. And this is George Russos. And George Russos was the in-house colorist at Marvel from like the 70s all the way to the mid-90s when he died. Um, matter of, and, and he goes all the way back to the Golden Age. If you get, um, this is the Dark Knight Archives Volume 2. And if you open it up, the beginning is a little, the foreword, is it the foreword? Or there's a, yes, yeah, the foreword is a little bit of an interview with George Russos. And they're interviewing him because 
he inked some of the earliest Batman comics. I mean, his career went all the way back to the beginning of the Golden Age, so that's interesting. But, you know, I knew him from Marvel. And when I was posting these pictures, I, I went on Facebook and I was asking, you know, the crowd there, what, because here's George, there's his coloring setup, and he's actually coloring something right there. So I was trying to figure out what he was coloring, and we ended up figuring it out. It was from this comic. It was, let me show you. Where is, uh, there we go. He was coloring this splash page. Cross Time Critters. Is he, is he credited in this one too? Let me just see if he was credited, or if he was just Cross Time Critters. No, he wasn't. He must have just been recoloring the splash page because that, that's what happens sometimes if there was a mistake. It, it's got um, the credits go to Ashley Pozella for the colors, but I'm guessing he had to recolor this page for some reason because that's what he that was his job. He um, would fix things color wise. So there he is. He's actually got his brush in hand, and you could just make out. That that's that page that he was cut. So that's why I wanted this comic because that's the comic George Russo's was doing the original colors for in this portrait I took of him. So I, I, I thought that was pretty neat. So now I've got that comic. I'll have to, I'll have to store it with the. Uh, I'll have to store a picture in there. Matter of fact, I'll have to reprint that picture, comic book size, so I could put it in there. And then the last, uh, the last bit. Of, well, there's one other thing besides this last bit. I got some Strangers in Paradise Volume Three. I think this is this completes my Strangers in Paradise Volume Three. I think like Volume One has like four comics in it. Volume Two has like twelve comics in it, and Volume Three has like eighty comics in it. And I pretty much started it with Volume Three, but some I bought issues here and there. I don't think it was on my pull list until issue twenty. So here are the last ones I'm missing. Matter of fact, I think um, Undisputed Frost sent me some of these like two, three years ago. He found some and sent them to me uh, that I needed. But there's um, Strangers in Paradise. Was that number six? Strangers in Paradise, number seven. Strangers in Paradise, number 13. Nice cover on that one. I guess they flash back to high school. Strangers in Paradise, what is this, number 18? It's got Roman numerals down the bottom. I was never particularly good at Roman numerals. And Strangers in Paradise, number 19. These are all like two bucks a piece. They have them at fine, I think. You know what? I, I was like, I'll, I'll, I'll fill those in. Now, here's something I just noticed as I got this. Um, years ago, what was it? Um... Fantagraphics, uh, here, it's a big one, Delphine, number three. Fantagraphics was, did a series, their Ignatz series, I think it was, where they put out these oversized tape. I keep all tape away from my comics. I hate bags with tape on them. But anyway, that's in that bag, that's in this bag. But anyway, they have, this was a four-issue series, more tape on it. Getting rid of that tape. Watch that. We fold it right over so it can't catch on anything. Because if you use tape on your comics, you'll have a tape pull sooner or later. So keep it, keep it away. Keep it away. Bad, bad. Um, and I find it kind of oh, like this. There's stickers right on it. Jim Hanley's Universe put a 199 sticker on it. I'm going to take those off. And how do you take those off? Hold on. I've got, a, I've got a video on how to remove tape from a comic, and it's with this stuff. Bestine, solvent, and thinner. This and a brush will take those right off like it was never there. That's, that, that's what you got to use right there. Best, look, look up my video, how to, how to remove tape from comics, because I'm going to have to do it. But I like the, They're oversized. I only got the first two, though. I don't know why. I don't think I ever... I think I picked them up sort of on a whim in the shop and never put them on my pull list. So I never got three and four. 
And they're hard to track down now because they're oversized. They weren't printed a lot of them. So now I've got one, two, and three, and I need number four. And they have a uh, collected edition of it, but it's much smaller. It's like, you know, comic book size or smaller. So I just wanted, and this is Richard Sala, who died a couple of years ago. Um... So I just want, I've been wanting Delphine 3 and 4 for like a decade. When did these come out? 2008. So, so for like a decade, you know, over a decade, I wanted 3 and 4 and haven't picked them up. And I saw 3 there and was like, oh, I'm going to get 3. I'll worry. Sometimes It's like sometimes you look on eBay and they sell these for like 40 or $50. And it's like, no, thank you. I don't want it for 40 or $50. This one was like $3, I think. But it's funny that... Jim Hanley's universe is down in Manhattan. Um, I'm, I'm about 30, 30 miles outside of Manhattan, so it's funny that I had to order from Texas to get a book from Jim Hanley's universe. That was in, I guess they sold it to them. At, I, don't, I don't know. And wh what is Jim Hanley's universe doing putting a sticker on the front of a comic? I don't know what that is. But anyway, there are some back issues for you. And I'll probably catch you tomorrow when I get my pull list comics.